Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So I'm going to start out. We're going to look at both silver and Bitcoin, which are in very interesting patterns right now. But I want to start out by emphasizing this quote from Jesse Livermore. Jesse Livermore is, in my opinion, probably the greatest trader who's ever lived in the history of the world. Uh, there may have been many traders who were greater than him, but what he did was he actually wrote down what was in his mind when he was doing it and he wrote down the history of him learning from markets and why they do what they do so this quote here there's a lot of quotes in this article I'll link it so you can read them but this quote is about the line of least resistance and understanding why markets behave the way they do and we're going to see that when we look at the charts so let me read you this and explain what this quote means. The speculator is not an investor. His object is not to secure a steady return on his money at a good rate of interest, but to profit by either a rise or fall in the price of whatever he's speculating in. Therefore, the thing to do is, determine, is to determine the line of least resistance at the moment of trading. And what he should wait for is the right moment when the line defines itself. Because that is his signal to get busy. In a narrow market, when prices are not getting anywhere to speak of but move in a narrow range, there is no sense in trying to anticipate what the next big movement is going to be, up or down. Instead of hoping, he must fear. And instead of fearing, he must hope. He must fear that his loss may develop into a much bigger loss and hope that his profit may become a big profit. And I'm going to show you how that applies to the charts we're looking at, but there's a caveat here, and that is that uh, when you're talking about being a fundamental investor, and that's the reason why we invest in silver. We invest in silver because we believe in the fundamentals of it. We believe in the fundamentals not only of the asset itself, but of the fundamentals of the currency that it's purchased with and the bankruptcy and insolvency of the governments that issue that currency. So let's start with a look at the silver chart here. You can see these are the patterns that I point out all the time. These are the rising pennant or flag formations. And the reason why these work is exactly what he said, is that investors wait for the markets to define their direction. And the best way they define their direction is when they break out into new highs. The reason why that is, first of all, is because uh, this is when, due to human nature, uh, people who have bought at a high, an old high, say here, uh, they often recognize their mistake when the market goes against them. And what they do is they hope to get out. Remember, he talked about hope and fear. They hope to get out by breaking even. So what those people do is they create overhead resistance. They're waiting to sell into the rising market. They just want to get out even. They made a bad call, and they just want to get out and get their money back. So they wait for the market to come back to the price they bought at, and then they sell. What that does is that creates the overhead resistance. Once that resistance is penetrated, that's when you get the breakout. Because once those people have sold into the market and there are still buyers, the market tends to rise very rapidly. That's why you see these pennant formations. You also see the backing and filling on the approach to that price resistance. Uh, that's exactly what we're seeing in the silver market now. Now, in the silver market, these technical uh, types of patterns are not as accurate and that's because it's a manipulated market. One of the reasons we always check the volume is because uh, the volume of the paper market is how the manipulators do their game. They have to use paper contracts to manipulate the price. We saw that when we looked at the Bix Weir uh, release recent YouTube release that I covered where he talks about the exponential rise in paper contract volume. So you can see with silver, we're approaching that 1820 price. 
This is on the five minute chart and you can see we have a textbook pennant pattern. We also have a kind of small penetration of the uptrend so these, this could fail and these do fail much more often in manipulated markets because the people who are manipulating the market also are aware of these patterns and they use uh, these types of patterns to plan their attacks. Now the fact that there is no volume on this little breakdown here indicates that uh, the market is still strong. So at 1820 you can see when we pull out to the daily chart that we're definitely pulling into new highs and again I pointed out this is the area to be tested. There's a lot of resistance here. This is where we first burst up and then got the big smackdown. Uh, and then the major follow-on smackdown was the election of Donald Trump. Now let's go over and look at the Bitcoin market because this is uh, historical stuff that's happening in Bitcoin. You can see that on Bitstamp we hit a high of 1220. That's going to be an all-time high for that market. Now I'm not saying that uh, we've taken on all stops for the all-time highs, but we are uh, definitely, if not there, we're right next to being there. Now you can see the same sort of patterns emerging. Here are your pennants, here's your resistance, here's your breakout into new highs. You have another pennant formed here, a massive breakout and a test. The other thing that you often have are tests of the after the breakout. You can see one right here where we had the breakout and then a, a massive test actually breaking the trend line. Uh, you can see another one here. This was uh, following on the Chinese, uh, the second Chinese smackdown. But if we just look at the patterns here, we can see that we're not only uh, following the exact formula that Livermore is talking about, uh, and what he was talking about when he said waiting for the price to define itself, waiting for a time to make a move, uh, a textbook example here is in this chart at around 800. So a technical trader who was following Livermore's advice would put a buy stop right there above 800. And you can see they would have bought in and rolled all the way up to about 1150, 1133. And you can see that right after that, it actually went down below where that buy was at. So it's not an easy game to play, no question about it. So let's look at the overall picture here from the three day chart and get an idea of where we're looking at historically. So you can see Bitstamp definitely is we're talking about all-time highs here, right there, 1220. All-time highs in Bitstamp. BTCE, the Russian exchange, you can see there at 1188. That is definitely all-time high territory. Bitfinex at 1222, all-time high. OKCoin, the Chinese exchange, very interesting here. The all-time high was the one that we set earlier when the Chinese made a change to the system and uh, smacked the price down violently. But uh, we are right next to all-time highs on the Chinese exchange. Now you can see the Chinese exchange is lagging roughly by that $35 amount, the one we pointed out before. So that makes sense. When I, when I first saw this breakout happen tonight in the one minute chart, there was a big smackdown correction that occurred. Uh, it was around 11 something um, right in here. You can see that it, it got to almost that 1200 price and then a big smackdown. And my concern was perhaps, I don't know, it's just speculation, but it's perhaps that uh, some of those Bitcoins that have been frozen, uh, technically frozen. Now you have to remember that the Chinese had passed a rule that those major Chinese exchanges would uh, revise their rules, change their uh, structure and the way they do things, and they created that 30-day freeze uh, 
from withdrawing bitcoins. Now that's just simply a self-imposed thing. That doesn't mean those bitcoins can't be removed from that exchange. We don't know the answer to that question. It's my speculation that it's possible that those bitcoins that are on that Chinese exchange were actually transferred to American markets and used to suppress the price and sell off the US market right here when it was about to go into all-time highs. But again, uh, as we've seen in Bitcoin many, many times, uh, it's a pointless operation. Ultimately, they're going to fail because Bitcoin hasn't failed. Bitcoin has not been broken. Uh, the, the idea is solid. The idea of a cryptographic peer-to-peer -peer digital currency this idea exists it will always exist from the time that it came into existence uh, because it's an idea that's based on math and there's really no way to defeat it uh, I'm convinced of that I was actually convinced of that back in 2011 when I first examined Bitcoin read the white paper, looked at the math, looked at what I could understand. I'm certainly not nearly as technical and, and deep as someone like Yannanopoulos or um, uh, Roger Ver, the Bitcoin Jesus, or any of these people. But from what I looked at back in 2011, told me that this was something new on the scene. It appears to be the case. So we're now going into all-time highs uh, 1210 on Bitstamp, 1215 on Bitfinex. I would expect, based on those uh, trend lines, that we may be looking at a blow off top. Uh, that could be, that's a pattern we followed many times in Bitcoin. We're talking about perhaps a threefold rise, a twofold rise, we just don't know, or we could have a, a smackdown. But it's definitely not unprecedented in Bitcoin to have a two or threefold rise when we get a breakout. The, the other thing that you have to remember, and this is another thing that Jesse Livermore pointed out uh, back in the day and why he is, in my opinion, the greatest trader of all time, is uh, he was actually questioned on that. A lot of people questioned him about his uh, making a trade after the point of least resistance has been established and people asked him why don't you just buy it beforehand and his answer was well because I don't know if it's going to go up it may go down well then how do you know it's going to go up because of the line of least resistance being penetrated now the most important point to understand about a market that has penetrated the line of least resistance and is trading at new all-time highs and that apparently is the case here at 1222 is that every person who owns this asset on earth every single person on earth who owns this asset when the price is at an all-time high is at a profit that's extremely important to understand that principle because as I pointed out before people who make a mistake wait for the price to return to where they bought at to sell and get even but when a price is rising into new all-time highs there are no individuals who are at a loss that means there is no overhead resistance that means there's nobody waiting to sell when it gets to a certain price at that point when a price is rising into new all-time highs then people are only trying to guess how much money they're going to make the reason they sell is because they're satisfied with the profit they've made they're afraid that they won't be able to keep that profit uh, they're afraid that they're being too greedy and that it won't increase those are the only fears not the fear that um, that you're waiting above it to come back and just make a loss again hope and fear those are the two things the human emotions that drive markets so once you have a market that's trading at new all-time highs, there really is no fear operating. The only uh, thing that's operating is greed, and uh, that is how much people think they're going to make. Now, that was the factor in silver that was going to be uh, a reality when silver broke 
that nominal high of $50. So it's my contention that the reason why the powers that be did what they did back in May of 2011, which was to use a set of coordinated uh, margin hikes and over the night smackdowns and all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, fake stories in the news about bin Laden and Obama releasing his birth certificate and all kinds of crazy stuff. The reason why they did that is because silver would have been in the same position that Bitcoin is right now. Silver would have been in a position where everybody who owns silver is making money. And the only reason why they would sell is because they thought they'd made enough money or they thought that maybe uh, they wouldn't make more uh, and they could take their profit. So taking your profit in something that is at, at a new all-time high uh, is not something that that many people do. Most people will let things run and uh, they're not too worried about it. It could go much higher tomorrow. They just don't know. So that's why the powers that be had to come in and do what they did back in 2011. And you can see, as I point out many times, with the volume that we have, they're still doing it. They're still trying to keep the price of silver down. It's not anywhere near all-time highs. In fact, it's still below the 2008 highs. But uh, it, it's a very, very important asset and uh, it's fundamentally a very, very valued asset. So this Livermore analysis, again, is just purely technical analysis. Now, Livermore wasn't just a technical trader. He was also a fundamental trader. There were a lot of trades that he did based on fundamentals, especially in the cotton market, the sugar market, and many others. I don't have time to go into that here. But I did want to talk about one of the fundamentals here, and this is a story that's on Zero Hedge, called the $74 trillion global economy in one chart. Now, this is fundamentals. This is fundamentals about the demand. We often talk about fundamentals about the supply. With the fundamentals about the supply in silver, it's a, a really easy situation. You're talking about roughly a billion ounces. It's not even a billion anymore. In fact, it's falling down below 800 at this point. But uh, if you want to talk about $20 silver and a billion ounces a year, you're talking about $20 billion. Now, we're talking about a $74 trillion global economy. And so just do the math. Think about the fundamentals. Uh, the amount of money that's in the system versus the amount of silver that exists out there. You can see why they have a tremendous incentive to discourage people from taking their money and putting it into alternative investments like Bitcoin and silver. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this pie chart here is that it's not only broken down by countries, but it's broken down by continents. So you can see here the three dominant powers without any question are Asia and China in my opinion, should probably be larger than this. Again, this is in nominal currencies and it's based on current exchange rates. So that's very suspect. Uh, it's just based on currency GDP. It's not based upon real infrastructure and things that I would use to value a country. But still, you can see that Asia has already surpassed uh, the West as if you're comparing it directly to the United States. You can also see that uh, the Eurozone is a very, very large part of this. And then uh, you can see that the rest of the world is tiny. South America is basically irrelevant. Australia is irrelevant, if you want to call it a continent. And then Africa, the largest continent in the world, is, is really completely irrelevant. Uh, now, for all you flat earth conspiracy people, I would say, uh, you want to note that everything here that is of economic importance is in the north, whereas those hard to reach and very long traveled spots in the south towards the quote unquote ice wall are very, very small. Makes sense if you're talking about a world trade basis. So I'll leave that up to you, what you think about that. Uh, so again, back to the silver chart, uh, we're starting to get into 
that 18 something zone trying to make a test of the 21 to 22 price high that we had we're seeing silver rally at the same time we're seeing bitcoin rally this is very encouraging uh, i said that i thought in my last update that we'd probably see new all-time highs within 48 hours i think i was very close uh, if not right on uh, I do not think that 1222 is going to be the top for Bitcoin. I would not be surprised at all if we see $1,500 by tomorrow morning. And we'll talk to you next time.